Now let's come to question number 13. It's a simple question, uh, simple based on dimension analysis. Question says, to find the distance D over which a signal can be seen clearly in a foggy condition, a railway engineer uses dimensional analysis and assumes that the distance depends upon mass density rho, depends upon intensity and depends upon the frequency. So there are three parameters on which the distance depends. So let's say the distance is denoted by D. <coughs> so I'm assuming that the relationship is distance D is proportional to density, mass density. So let us say mass density rho, mass density rho to the power A, then intensity which is denoting by S, so intensity to the power of B and then the third term is frequency F, frequency to the power C. So let's say this is a logical uh, equation. I can remove this proportionality constant by some constant. So I can write the equation as d is equal to some constant c, which is dimensionless constant, into rho to the power a, s to the power b, and then frequency to the power c. Now, if this equation is logically correct, it should be dimensionally true as well. Hence, we can equate dimensions on both the sides. So writing dimensions of all the quantities, dimension of d is l is equal to, <coughs> I'm writing dimensions on both the sides, c is a dimensionless constant. Density, it's like mass per unit volume. So, m ml minus 3 to the power a. S, he has denoted s as intensity and he has himself uh, said in the paper that it's, it's power upon area. Power is energy per unit time. So, that gives me energy per unit time per unit area. Energy has a dimension of m l to p minus 2. So, energy per unit time per unit area. That means I divided by l square and I divided by t to get the dimension of my term s. This comes out to be m l 0 t to the power minus 3. So, that is m l 0 t to the power of minus 3 power b. And frequency, frequency we all know it's 1 by time. That means t to the power minus 1. So, t to the power minus 1 power c. Now, this becomes my dimensional equation. Now, equating powers on both these sides, let us find out what is the power of m on the right hand side. So, m has a power of a and a plus b. What is power of l? Minus 3a. <coughs> That's it. And what is the power of t? t is minus 3b minus c minus 3b minus c. And this is equal to l. So, <coughs> m here, m to the power 0. I am equating a plus b with m to the power 0, hence this gives me a plus b is equal to 0. I am equating minus 3a with 1, hence minus 3a gives me 1. This gives me a is equal to minus 1 by 3. Substituting this in the above equation, I also get b is equal to 1 by 3. And then equating the power of time t, minus 3b minus c is 0. So minus of 3b minus of c gives me 0. b I have already calculated, hence c is nothing but minus of 3 times of b and b is 1 by 3. So that means it's it's like minus of 1. All power of all the three terms ABC are known to me. Now question is said that the engineer finds that D is proportional to S to the power 1 by N. D is proportional to S to the power 1 by N. That means he is in place of B, he is saying B is as good as 1 by N and B comes out to be 1 by 3. Hence B he is saying b is 1 by n and r b comes out to be 1 by 3. If I compare both the terms, I can write n is equal to 3. So, he is asking me the value of n. Hence, the answer comes out to be 3. Now, let us come to question number 14. Question 14 is a question on thermodynamics. And the question says, there is a thermodynamic system and it is taken from some initial state i. So, there is a, a PV diagram which the question has given to us. Pressure volume diagram. This is pressure. This is volume. <coughs> And uh, the diagram is something like this, something like this. The question says, okay, this is state I and this is state F. Here is A, somewhere here on the straight line is B. <coughs> and uh, he says that uh, from I to F, there are two paths that can be followed. It's like I A F and then another path can be followed as I to B and then B to F. Now, he has given us some information. He says that internal energy at the point I is 100 joule. So, internal energy Ui, internal energy at the point I, he says it is 100 joule. Then he says, uh, uh, the work done by the system along the path AF, IB and BF are as follows. So, he is saying work done AF in the path AF is 200 joule, 200 joules. Work done in the path IB, work done in the path IB is 50 joules. And then work done in the path BF, work done in the path BF is 100 joules. So, B to F work done is 100 joules, okay. 
then says heat is supplied to the system along the path IAF, IB and BF and the terms are denoted as QIAF, so QIAF means energy, uh, heat energy which has been supplied when the, when the system goes from IAF, similarly QIB and QBF, so QIAF he is denoting, then QIB he is denoting and then another term Q from B to F he is denoting. Now, he says if the internal energy of the system in the state B is UB is equal to 200 joule. So in the state B internal energy is UB is equal to 200 joule. So UB in the state B is 200 joule. Fine. And QIAF. QIAF ka value he is saying 500 joules. So QIAF is 500 joules. This is 500 joules. Then the question says find out the ratio of Q uh, in the process BF upon Q in the process IB. So we have to find out the values of these two and then we have to find out the ratio. Let us try to understand uh, QIB and QBF, we have to find out. <coughs> now, if I follow the path IAF, internal energy at the path I is known to me and IAF may, from, I to I, from I to A, the path is, it is like volume constant, it is an isochoric path. Hence, if I write uh, first law of thermodynamics for the path IAF, so for the path IAF, I can write delta Q supplied during this process is equal to change in internal energy delta U for the process plus work done. Now work done during path IAF would be equal to work done done in the path A to F because work done in I to A is 0, constant volume process. <coughs> Hence from this equation I can find out what is the internal energy at the state F. Substituting the values I can write 500 is equal to change in internal energy means final internal energy minus initial internal energy. So final internal energy UF minus of initial internal energy which is 100 joules. UF minus of 100 plus work done, work done which is 200 joules, which is 200 joules. I solve this equation and I find out what is the value of internal energy at the point F. It comes out to be 400 joules. So internal energy at the point F comes out to be 400 joules. Fine. Now, <coughs> now if I write the equation for the process for the process I B, so for the process I B, Q I B I need to find out what is Q I B need to find out. And then internal energy at the point B is uh, given to me 200 joule. Internal energy at the point I is given to me as well as he has given me work done in the path I B. Hence I can write first law of thermodynamics for the path I to B. Delta Q for the path I B can be understood as change in internal energy which is U B minus of U I. U B is 200, U I is 100. Change in internal energy comes out to be 100 plus work done in the path I to B. Work done in the path I to B is 50 joules. 50 joules. Hence, this comes out to be 150 joules. So, delta Q in the process IB comes out to be 150. Question has asked us the ratio of uh, QBF to QIB. QIB we have already calculated. Now, let us try to understand how to calculate Q, the energy given uh, as the thermodynamic system moves from state B to state F. Again, I apply first law of thermodynamics for, for state B to state F. So, state B to state F. Again, if I apply first law of thermodynamics, then Q in the process delta Q in the process BF would be equal to <coughs> the change in internal energy which is which is UF minus of UB. UF we have calculated 400 joules and UB question is given to us 200 joules. So change in internal energy comes out to be 400 minus of 200 is 200 plus work done in the process B to F. Work done in the process B to F is 100 joules plus 100. So this comes out to be 300. 300 joules. So, delta Q in the process B to F comes up to be 300 joules. <coughs> Question has asked us what is the ratio of uh, what is the ratio of Q B F to Q I B. So, Q B F is 300 joules then Q I B is 150 joules and to find out the ratio that is 300 divided by 150. So, ratio delta Q in the process this divided by delta Q in the process this comes out to be 300 divided by 150 comes out to be 2. Hence, the answer comes out to be 2.